Hi everybody. It is a little early to start Vlogstis or Holla Vlog or whatever, but I wanted to start today because this is the first Sunday of the Solstice celebration that Beth Al's daughter has done every year. It's called the Solstice Sun Wheel Prayer for Advent. And I've done it, I've done it three years in a row. It's been going on for 19 years. Um, and it is a way for people of all beliefs or all um, ways of looking at the world to celebrate the time of the turning of the year. Um, she provides a lot of good background on her website. It's owlsdaughter.com. And if you look in her blog, there is a section that talks about the uh, Solstice Sun Wheel Prayer. Um, I find this time of year particularly difficult. Um, I know a lot of people love winter. I enjoy winter, but I have, I struggle with the dark and cold combined, especially when it's dark, cold, and dreary, which uh, it often is here in Arkansas. Um, so this is a way for me to sort of lift myself out of that. And also it's a way for me to connect to this global uh, thing that's happening. It starts today at dusk, but you can start it at any time. You don't have to be prepared today to start it. You can start it at any time. But what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit about what I have prepared here. I have, this is my main uh, working altar back here uh, with, I've done a, a arrangement of some winter greens. There's, um, here, I'll just move this and show you. So there are some cedar uh, boughs. This is the female cedar with the berries. Uh, there are some oak leaves. There are some elderberry leaves. This is a milkweed pod and then a goldenrod stalk here as well. Um, and there's some other, oak, two or three different kinds of oak leaves in there. And, it's just, and there's some sumac leaves, these bright red or sumac. So it's just a way for me to remember that even in the dark part of the year, there is bounty to be found. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my altar setup here. Um, I prepared a new altar. I had a freezer that quit and I moved the little deep freeze that was out of this part of the room into the utility room. And so that gave me an opportunity to set up a new altar. And when you have as much <laughs> witchy stuff as I do, you need more space, right? Um, so what I have done is I have set this one up with this particular um, ceremony in mind. Um, on this, I have uh, this is Chip's skull, my horse Chips that died this year. This is a carving by Rachel from Sticks and Stones. It's the Justice carving, and it actually is a balance. And there's a lot of different stones. Many of these stones were gifts from people that I love and care about. But the main thing that I wanted to show you was this piece. This is my candle holder that I got for this um, ceremony. And it is Celtic knotwork because that resonates with me. And then I have Bayberry candles. So why Bayberry candles, you might ask. Bayberry candles, let me put y'all back up here. Bayberry candles are for prosperity and um, good fortune. And a lot of times people will burn them at Christmas time. You'll see them for sale at Christmas time a lot this year. And that is because they represent prosperity and good fortune. So I chose to use uh, Bayberry tapers for this particular uh, thing because I am very strongly trying to manifest prosperity and abundance and good fortune as we move into the new year. I want to be more active in the community. I want to be accepted to these events and teach at them. Um, I, I need some prosperity. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for that because um, this year has been a challenge for me financially because of everything that has happened with the gas line. And I just need to... I need, <laughs> I need some of that prosperity to flow this direction, please. So what I'm going to do is I'll tell you a little bit about today's particular focus and then we'll start, okay? So um, what she does on her blog is she gives you sort of this year's beginning focus that you can say for today. And um, we set our intentions as we go into the darkness of the winter. And then each day or each time we light this on a Sunday, I'm going to do the Sundays and then light my final candle on solstice 
You can also time it for Christmas or you can do both. It just depends on what you want to do. Um, so what I want to do is read the intention and then read the focus um, for tonight. So I'm going to read the focus and then I'll read the intention as I light the candle. Okay. So tonight's first lighting is November 26. Gather your loved ones or alone uh, tonight around sunset. Ground and center yourself and create sacred space in whatever way is right for your practice. The first candle may represent the element of air, knowledge, information, understanding, communication. And the suit of tarot, it represents usually the suit of swords, work, perception, attitude, thought. It is important to acknowledge the dissonance and worry currently affecting this element. From pollution in the air we breathe, to the spying and manipulation of global communications, to the doubts and disputes to being raised about whether there can even be any such thing as facts or truth, Think about how fear distorts what we see, what we believe, and how we make choices. We pass judgments. We are told and sometimes share hurtful stories about one another. We are being lied to and our information access is being manipulated by bad actors on a colossal scale, not seen since the dark days of the Second World War. If you are with your friends or family or community, you might talk about how these matters talk about these matters and the chilling winds of subterfuge and ignorance now threatening the expression free expression and the core values of our democracies then allow some silence with your breathing inhaling and exhaling begin to see know and forgive the ways those types of fear exist with clarity and compassion consider how your own prejudices may have wounded you like perhaps any ways that you have spoken untruths or unkindnesses and then, still using your breath as a magical tool, let those fears and hurts be dispelled as you light your candle. When it is lit, breathe into, a, breathe into a profound awareness and gratitude for breath itself, this first, last, and most vital gift of life. Feel your inhale and exhale, your lifelong companion, as it helps you relax, become alert and aware. Let your breath sigh or laugh or sing or pray. If you are with loved ones, you might tell stories, speak of what you give thanks for, give honor to those who are dear to you and why. Gaze a while upon the dancing flame, call upon the power of this week's element or gift of spirit to heal and bless. When you are at peace and the time feels right, gently extinguish your candle. Now, I'm not going to have you guys watch all me do all of that, but I thought it would be nice if we shared each week my candle lighting. So I'm going to get ready here and we will light the candle. From within the sacred dark, we shall arise with a returning light. By this candle light, we stand for the light that cannot die. With our prayers, we embrace the most ancient divine ones whose name is love. With our hands and hearts joined, now at this threshold of change, we invoke the irrepressible dawning of healing, grace, and rebirth. With unfailing devotion, with all our courage, from within and without, for the earth, her resources, and all her beings, so mote it be. Healing to all those who need it. Blessings to all the earth. So would it be.